recently had a subscriber ask me to do a walk around of the guillotine hammer. If you don't know much about treadle hammers, there's kind of an interesting culture about them at the moment. Obviously, there's a lot of people getting into blacksmithing right now, um, and hammers, power hammers, and presses can be expensive. So alternative options have always been a thing uh, for blacksmithing, even way back in 18th century and before that, and people are still building stuff like this today, especially nowadays where there's kind of a market for that. The main problem that I was running into with the Clay Spencer treadle hammer was that the head, if you've ever seen one, uh, the, the ram, for example, the ram slides up and down through a series of skateboard wheels, or, or mine have roller blade wheels. Uh, so they have bearings, and it rolls up and down between those, and it has uh, two in the front, two in the back, and then two on either side of this ram. And then flat faces on the ram. It allowed to slide up and down very smoothly, up and down through these these guides. And then the treadle has a series of linkages in the back that pulls that down and hits it onto the anvil uh, or whatever dies you have in place there. And while that works, and again, it's a fascinating concept, there was one major flaw with that. The major flaw that I saw with it was adjustability. You couldn't adjust it. You could adjust it. You could adjust it. It had adjustments, and the, the two main adjustments that it had was uh, being able to lift uh, the the ram up higher or drop it down lower. Uh, and when you did that, the, the treadle kind of went up and down with it. So you raise the head, the treadle would move pretty much one-to-one -one ratio in its distance, and you'd be able to move it up and down. And then the second adjustability that it had was the ability to separate the treadle from the, the ram. So the ram would stay where it was, but then the treadle would be able to go up and down. That way, if you raise the head all the way up, you wouldn't be way up here trying to balance, trying to push this treadle down because it brought it all the way up with it. So you could drop it down a little bit lower so it was more comfortable for the user to just put their foot on a treadle that wasn't very high off the ground, uh, but still not actually hit the ground with your treadle before you uh, bottomed out on the dies. So those are the two adjustments that I had. The problem I was having with it was Yes, it could be adjusted, but it can only be adjusted a couple inches either direction. Uh, and while that's useful for zeroing that in so that the machine works a little bit more efficiently, so it's actually useful, it wasn't useful enough. I could never put any of my top tools in between the flat dies. Even though the flat dies on that treadle hammer were only, you know, an inch tall, maybe not even that, maybe like three quarters inch tall. I was still having the hardest time using any of the top tools that I have. These top tools were geared towards, again, uh, me holding a piece and someone swinging a sledgehammer and striking it. Uh, as you can see, I didn't have a whole lot of stroke. And that was what I was running into with the Clay Spencer style treadle hammer because I could only bring it up so far. And then there was a cap. Like that, that was it. That was as far as it would go up. And it took a lot of tools and hand tools and like wrenches and things to adjust. And it would take forever to adjust it. So pretty much you had to get it adjusted to a specific height and then use it the best that you could. And at that point, you'd have to modify your tools to make that work because this was just too tall. So all of my tools were too tall. So the main thing that I wanted to accomplish with this treadle hammer was adjustability. So that's the main idea behind this. Again, being a tool maker, I don't have time to be taken forever to make these tiny little adjustments that are only barely making it possible for me to do what I'm trying to do. I don't have time to be uh, compromising everything, compromising my tools and compromising this and trying to make everything work. This treadle hammer makes it so I don't have to do that. I don't have to compromise. I can use all kinds of different tools that weren't specifically made for a treadle hammer. I can use all kinds of stuff, hot cuts and punches and drifts and all kinds of things because it's adjustable. There are two points of adjustability on this, a lot like the Clay Spencer hammer, but rather than inches of adjustment, we're talking feet of adjustment. As you can see, the main idea is here, we have some very simple feet that it stands on. On the back side, we have a rod. Very simple, no pillow blocks, no bushings, no uh, uh, wash, nothing that's allowed. That's just metal on metal contact, which is fine because it hardly moves back here at all. It just needed a pivot point for the treadle which comes out here, very, very simple. Uh, we have two sets of rails on either side that's just two by two, quarter inch thick tubing, square tubing, that go all the way up. 
and create the entire frame. We got a couple bars stretching across that keep the anvil directly in the center of those two rails and keep everything aligned with itself. Uh, we have the, the head of the hammer, which if you look at the top here is just uh, a bunch of flat plates welded together with a little gap in between that allows it to accept this two inch by quarter inch shank that is wedged in there and held in so the die stays in there. Same thing with the bottom here. The anvil is made of a bunch of flat plates welded together and this die has a shank, again two by a quarter inch, that is accepted in that slot. Uh, rather than using a big block and trying to find some way to attach dies to it with bolts or anything, I just use the wedge system because it's a lot simpler and easier to take on and off. And I don't need any tools besides maybe like a hammer to knock the wedge out. On the very top of these rails, I have holes. These are the adjustment holes. They accept this pin that are held in by cotter pins. These, uh, I don't know what to call these, these little carriages that slide up and down and make the adjustment have the springs attached to them with matching ears and bolts that hold in the spring. This is attached to the ram, the slide guides, that are just a piece of receiver tubing that I eventually cut this face out of because uh, my main design was to keep the receiver tubing solid, but there was too much friction. There was so much friction on this side that it wouldn't even allow the head to go up and down. And I couldn't get it to work properly. So I ended up just cutting this out. So you don't actually need to use receiver tubing. You could actually just fabricate something a lot simpler and, and do that easier than I did it. These adjustment holes allow you to have quite a bit of adjustment. They are all about two inches apart, center to center. So each time you go up, you're gaining or losing two inches of stroke. I got five different adjustment holes on there. Honestly, I, I have never used the top adjustment hole. I gave myself a lot of extra just in case, you know, things got crazy in the future and I needed that much of adjustment. Our second point of adjustment is these chains that connect the treadle to the head. We have some little uh, finger biter clips here that you just take that off and you can adjust the distance between the treadle and the head, just like the clay spencer, only it doesn't require, again, any tools, no wrenches, no, no turning anything, and it's a very quick uh, change, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. So real quick, I wanted to show you how easy it is to adjust this hammer to what you need. A uh, very common adjustment that I've been making recently with the stuff I've been forging. First thing I'm gonna do is change out the dies. I'm gonna change out the dies from the drawing dies to uh, flat dies. And all I have to do is knock that wedge out, and the die slides right out. I replace it with my new die. I got little divots in the front that match up with the front here, so I know which direction it's supposed to be facing. And the dies actually come together uh, evenly, uh, so they actually line up rather than being off center. Now we got our flat die locked in. Bottom die, nothing's holding that in with gravity, so that just slides right out. Top die, again, has little divots on it to know which direction it should be facing. And now we have our flat dies. Now I'm running into the problem of the problem that I had with the Clay Spencer hammer. Uh, if this is as tall as it goes, that's how much room I have. So if I was working on something flat, like this spoon, for example, here, we'll slap that on there. We'll call that like maybe a quarter of an inch thick. I currently only have about, I mean, if that piece was in here, I'm looking at like five inches of stroke, five inches of stroke. And you might be able to get that done. And again, anybody might be looking at this design and think, oh, this is over-engineered. Why don't you just make that shorter? Well, you could make that shorter. But there will always come a point when you're working on a taller and taller piece, where as the piece gets taller, inch and a half stock, very common for hammers. Again, I'm a tool maker. This is the type of height that I'm working with a lot of the time for bigger stuff. This is a common punch that I would use for, for a hammer. We're at like four and a half inches now. Again, this is shorter than it should be. It should be longer than that. So really we're looking at closer to four inches. Four inches of stroke before I actually start punching into it. Real quick, I'm gonna take these pins out drop the treadle so I'm not carrying that weight and now I just have the head up here I'm going to remove the cotter pins and while lifting up on this I'm going to take this pin out put it down there switch sides take the pin out and lift this up four inches brought it up two holes go back to the other side 
Now that process does require a little bit of physical strength to do that, but look how fast that was. Two links down, now I brought that uh, treadle up without changing the height of the ramp. Now I can bring that down and it doesn't hit the ground or the frame before. Again, I take my three inch tall, five pound billet, slap that in there. And I take my three inch tall billet and six inch long punch, put that in there and look how much room I have. I have seven inches of stroke almost, a little less than seven inches of stroke. If for some reason I needed more than that, I got two more inches up here that I can just that. So I can really bring this thing down with some force because it has so much stroke. It is so beneficial to me that this is just made out of common stuff, stuff that you can find all over the place, especially the dies. If you're going to build a hammer, make sure that when you go to build your dies, whatever you use for the shank, make sure that's just common material that you can just find anywhere. Because this is the part that over time, you're going to be replacing, fixing, and making more of these as needed throughout the life of this machine. You can find springs, nothing super fancy about these. You can buy these online for like seven bucks a piece. All the hardware and the pins, the cotter pins, uh, everything's just common. You find this all over the place. These chains came from uh, a set of tire chains from a truck. A lot of this is just metal on metal contact, which for some people that's a huge concern because this, this slide guide in here, there are no plastic slides. There are no uh, wear surfaces. Because I greased the, the, the rails on both sides to make it move a little smoother, but it is just kind of metal grinding on metal. Again, some people are going to be very concerned about that and think, mm, that doesn't work for me. I need to have like a uh, plastic slide interface. Some people insist on putting pillow blocks and bearings back here. I just don't have those. There's so little friction on these when they move because when you bring this treadle down, it's just moving ever so slightly. This is a concern that people are going to have looking at this slide guide and thinking that's going to wear out over time. This slide guide here uh, on the inside is going to wear out. And you're right, it will do that. But I'm telling you, this isn't a power hammer. This isn't uh, cycling 300 times a minute. This is a treadle hammer. It cycles maybe 20 times a minute. <laughs> Grease in between the slide guide and the rail is just about all you need to get this thing to move very smoothly. Will it wear out eventually? Of course it will. But I'm not concerned about that. Uh, because by the time that I have gotten everything that I need out of this machine, and used it to its fullest potential. Those are gonna wear out like a little bit, but it's not really gonna affect its accuracy and coming down and hitting the, the work piece. It's not gonna affect um, it binding up. I just don't think it's gonna be a problem. So I'm not too concerned about it, but other people might. You could over-engineer that if you'd like, but honestly, this works just fine. I hope this answered some of your questions. Um... If you like this video, please share it with your friends. If you know somebody who could benefit from this understanding or probably would want to build one of these on their own, uh, please let them know, share that this video with them because uh, I would love to see more people using this design and, and working with that design and making it even better. Hope you stick around and, and want to subscribe and see the other stuff that I'm working on. I'm currently working on uh, a gas powered power hammer, mechanical power hammer. And hopefully in the future, I'll actually build a, a gas powered press as well. I'm very limited on my, my shop space and my shop uh, uh, versatility because I don't have a whole lot of electricity. I run off of generators mostly. So that should be an adventure in itself, trying to figure out how to make that work. Uh, thank you so much for watching.